Am I audible? Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. You are audible. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you, Pranobi, for giving me this opportunity to speak before you all. I also thank our principal for turning out our college webinars, online workshops, and online classes as a continued education program for the last six months. And I hope this will benefit the students in enriching their knowledge during this lockdown period. I cordially invite all the eminent speakers on our today's webinar series number 10. And today's topic is problems of teaching, how to breathe. Also, Congratulations to those IT subcommittee for making the webinar successful. Also, the non-teaching staff needs to be thanked from my end for their continuous support. Uh, lastly, I welcome all my beloved students and hope we understand the ins and outs of today's topic from all the valuable concepts and the comments of our learned speakers. Thank you, Pranobi. Thank you. Hello. Uh, we can we can hear you. Pranobi? Okay, sir. Thank you. Pranobi, I ended here. Thank you very much for your speech. Uh, now I would like to request our Professor Indwain Bhattacharya to hand over the technical speaker. Dr. Indwain Bhattacharya is a professor and former head of the Department of Private and Information Science, Jadukri University, Kolkata, and he is the a visiting professor in several universities. He has more than 70 research articles published nationally and internationally. He is also edited too many research models and was editor-in-chief of the librarian, the organ of Jane Hill. More than that, he has successfully completed so many research uh, projects funded by the uh, various organizations. Dr. Hattacharya is the member of Various institutions. He is successfully supervised 13 PhD scholar in research guide. He is the ex member of the Executive Council and Board of Jadhav University. Dr. Hattachandra is the expert.
participate in many committees of different universities. Raising me, he is member the statutory bodies of different universities. Please let over to you. Thank you, Pranavi. <clears throat> I am thankful to the Ravindra Mohabit Dala Authority, especially the principal sir and Dr. Bandhapadda for inviting me in this webinar. The topic of the webinar is problem of teaching, how to bridge the gap. I think this is the most relevant topic of this time. Particularly this webinar, Ravindra Mithapadalai received huge number of inspiration. It's, it, it, it's almost 600 participants are there and from different countries of the world, participants from Turkey, Nigeria, Indonesia, Bangladesh, and India, and almost all the parts of India from Kashmir to Kerala and from Arunachal Pradesh to Gujarat, they have received almost 600 participants. Am I audible? Hello? Yeah, sir, we can listen you. Okay, okay, clear. okay. Very clear. Oh. So, uh, in my opinion, this uh, webinar may be a great success. There are very four, uh, very eminent four speakers are there. One from Bangladesh and other three from different parts of India. Really, we are facing a huge problem. Globally, it is almost 130 crores of students. And in India, it is 32 crores of students are lying in their home, they, are, they cannot attend their colleges and schools. So it is a serious problem. And divides are there. There are digital divides. There are financial divides. There are so many divides. There are problems of connectivity. There are problems of internet connection. There are connections of data, etc. So it is a huge problem. We, the teachers of different universities and colleges, we also in tremendous mental pressure from 19th of March 2000 of this year, we are still in home. Basically, we are operating in online mode. And I think this is, we are not habituated with this type of pedagogy. So the pedagogy we are falling, falling right now falling, we can call it a pandemic pedagogy. I don't know when we'll go, we'll go back to our colleges or universities, when we face our students directly. As a senior teacher, I prefer chalk and talk method, but we are not highly conversant with this type of methodology, but we are trying to adapt this new methodology to the new, new uh, pedagogical culture. In this webinar, we have four speakers I have already mentioned. At first, I am requesting Professor Dr. R.K. Mohapatro R.K. Mohapatro is the Associate Professor and Head of the Department, Department of Library and Information Science, Tripura University. He's a huge experience of 26 years of teaching and 22 years of research experience. He has specialization in research methodology, knowledge organization, library management, and reference service. He successfully supervised 24 scholars PhD scholars published four books and he has published more than 150 journal published in different national and international journals. I am requesting Professor Mohapatro, Ravindra Kumar Mohapatro to deliver his lecture. Sir, please. Yes. Mohapatro, sir. I am audible, sir. Yes, you yes. can start. I am audible. You can start. You are the first speaker. Okay. Ah. Good afternoon, one and all, mm. respected principal, ICC coordinator, esteemed panel speakers, Professor Mithul and Professor Chaudhary, respected moderator and my colleague, Professor Udayan Bhattacharya, conference doctor uh, coordinator, respected audience, dear students, research scholars on the online webinar. At the outset, I am privileged and honored to be a part of this academic endeavor. And I heartily and heartily uh, thanks to the organizer for inviting me to this August webinar to put my ideas uh, on this webinar. 
and i congratulate to the organizer for arranging this webinar series for the students and teachers during this pandemic uh, situation and engaging the uh, students and teachers in this academic uh, endeavor uh, by participating uh, on this webinars today the topic is very interesting uh, for the academic ac accomplishment uh, discussions are very interesting uh, it will be followed by other speakers my colleague fellow colleague speakers and this topic is need of our as to know this uh, covid 19 uh, pandemic has uh, uh, paralyzed the socio economic activities of the world and it is also badly affected to the academic activities of the student teachers and research scholars and particularly the teachers uh, on teaching uh, common particular teachers and the teaching community also in the problem of teaching and how to bridge the gap uh, between students and the teachers uh, the problems uh, have been created uh, during this pandemic situation and what we find that uh, uh, no, this is not a physical access uh, platform so it is not a classroom uh, uh, classroom uh, cl uh, teaching and learning and there is a distance mode of learning and we are in quite distance between the students and the teaching community and the problems of handling itc ict tools and technique both by teachers and the students and problems of uh, online teaching aids also with the uh, acquaintance with the aids by students and the teachers and problems of network and poor network and no network uh, both facing the teacher also facing and the students are also facing and problem problems in reachable so there are students which are we are not able to reach them there are few students we are reaching them uh, for example i am taking my students uh, when you have started for providing online mode of classes uh, to the student uh, starting from the starting of this pandemic situation only 50 to 60 percent student we are reached to them so this is another major problem for reachable to the students and proper problem of the preparedness as uh, udan sir is told that uh, the teachers are not prepared how to uh, teach with the st uh, student through this online mode although we were teaching uh, through this uh, these platforms say ppt mode and uh, flipped mode of learning in the classroom but we have not acquainted with the uh, these teaching on the online platform that is on the web platform and another one is acceptance of the student how much the students are accepting as the to the uh, teachers community so that is another problem and uh, no doubt we can say that uh, there is no replacement of a classroom teaching okay this online mode may be a temporary uh, temporary uh, to meeting the situation of this pandemic uh, situation so this although the, there have been many problems are there but you cannot deny these problems so we have as a teaching community as a teacher we have to accept it and you have to bridge the gap between teaching and teach our students so the teachers uh, are very much responsible and we can uh, say no to this uh, situation we have to adapt to the changes and uh, we have to uh, say uh, we have to acquaint with both uh, both mode of learning teaching mode of learning and the classroom mode of learning so uh, my point of view uh, that a new role of teacher has started where previously we, the teachers are concerned about teaching research and learning but now the new role of teacher has been started so our new role will be design develop deliver transact motivate and engage the student and the students also equally have the responsibility to design develop deliver transact motivate and engage themselves so these are the equal role played by the teacher as well as the students so coming to the point for designing so we have to design the curriculum to set to this online mode of the uh, online mode like uh, designing the curriculum course curriculum then designing the program outlining the program and making assessment outcome making assessment and assess come out, uh, assessment outcome and develop uh, the course content and convert it into text mode ppt mode audio video mode so this uh, the third part is uh, the delivery mode is uh, online mode or uh, say uh, social networking mode or uh, google class uh, uh, google class or mobile apps or module or presentation tube or skino customatic or uh, some instrumental uh, video tutorials or multimedia or e content or self instrumental uh, materials and uh, the basic uh, assessment tool will be uh, basic uh, tools and uh, applied basic tools and the action mode basic tools 
and there should be a creative mode of thinking for assessment mode mcq test then the first part of uh, that is design delivery and uh, develop then the coming to the second part uh, transact motivate and engage we should uh, be uh, more uh, intensive oriented by monitoring the student uh, with uh, combining the flipped mode and the blended mode of learning with transact with the students uh, the teacher should have a continuity uh, continue touch with the students how they are doing what they are doing and how we have to evaluate their uh, performances and another thing is uh, we have to motivate them we have to inspire them you have to mentor them because we know that there is a pandemic situation the students are very much deprived deprived and they are also de depressed so we have to motivate them we should not uh, stick to our uh, age we are doing in the classroom but to hear in the because the student may not be acquainted with the new technologies the new trends so we have to motivate them we have to inspire them and the lastly that is called engaging the student so how can engage the student give the hands on activities or group activities say uh, working home then join uh, new uh, uh, new some uh, uh, innovative uh, innovative webinars that has been like now taking place in the various platforms uh, then ask them to join on uh, uh, swayam courses uh, neptel and other webinars uh, okay tell uh, ask them to join the registration join and registration and participants with different moocs also then uh, online educational resources also then these are some of the uh, we can bridge the gap between the student uh, by this uh, um, uh, six outline that is uh, design develop or delivery uh, transact motivate and uh, engage their students but uh, equally the student has a role that uh, after uh, the delivering uh, delivering these uh, uh, instruction by the teachers uh, the student has equally role that they must have a uh, action plan so what they have to learn and uh, uh, how they can best use a better the action plan will be three term of action plan that is a short term action plan that will be middle mid to mid term action plan and there will be long term assessment plan uh, assessment plan so the short term plan will be daily and weekly work has to be charted out by the teachers okay then the mid term plan monthly or periodically approach will be given by the teacher and the student has to perform and the teacher has to evaluate and long term plan means the implementing so what they have learned because learning is not the great thing the learning after learning it must be reflected the learning should be reflected and the learning should be put into action so implementation is uh, most uh, important in the uh, the quality of uh, uh, in the activities of their self domain what they have learned and how they can execute to their learning in the creative thinking or implement into their uh, uh, core course of their uh, domain besides that uh, the teacher should uh, always keep in touch with the students uh, they would say uh, they, they have to uh, they have to know about what is the psychological factor of the student uh, health factor of the student uh, okay so that uh, the student can prosper uh, during this uh, pandemic situation uh, i think uh, uh, my point of view if it will be uh, accepted then it will create a, a gap uh, it will create a bridge between the teacher and the student to uh, accept with this uh, pandemic situation and online mode of uh, thinking and uh, we have to develop the course curriculum etc according to this uh, online uh, mode and uh, you know that uh, in this new education policy and ugc has also insisted that uh, whenever you are designing our course curriculum there should be 20 to 30 percent of uh, course curriculum should be activity to the ict oriented thank you very much so once again i uh, congratulate uh, to the organizers for hosting this uh, webinar for the students and teachers and inviting me to this platform for sharing my views thank you thank you very much thank you professor mohapatra for your expert opinion and i think all the listener of this webinar will be benefited from your deliberation uh, pranavi uh, principal sir is here no pranavi can you can you hear me yes sir principal sir has not joined now yet now okay then uh, let's continue okay yes sir yes sir okay our next speaker is professor dr mohammad nasiruddin dr nasiruddin dean school of anagaji studies rashan university of bangladesh and working as editor of national university journal of humanity social sciences and business studies actually he is a very illustrious personality 
of today's Bangladesh in the domain of library and information science. Dr. Nasiruddin visited so many places around the globe. Actually, I found across the globe he has visited USA, UK, Norway, Finland, Denmark, India, France, Thailand, Singapore, Japan, Sri Lanka as a visiting faculty and delivered his uh, beautiful lectures. He is more than 19 years in teaching and research experiences. I am requesting Dr. Nasiruddin to deliver his lecture and enlighten us. Sir, please, please deliver your lecture. Muhammad Nasiruddin, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Uh, President. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, it's my pleasure. And I am also grateful to Ravindra Mahavidyalaya, who has given me this opportunity. I am audible, please. Yes, audible. Audible, uh, sir. Yeah, audible. But let me share my screen, OK? Just let me share my screen. Uh, you are fully audible. You can share your screen. You sir, are visible you, and audible. Can you see my screen, sir? No, no, no. OK, just a minute, sir. It's a, it's a screen problem. Screen share. Share screen. Right now it's okay, sir. Yes, yes, yes. it is visible. It is visible. Okay. okay, visible. Thank you so much again. And uh, already. Sir, make it full screen. Please make uh, it yeah. full screen. Yeah, yeah, I'm giving. I'm giving it full screen. Uh, okay now. Okay. Uh, uh, yes. It's fine. Yeah. It's fine. So I will take a little bit time. Please, I will uh, be grateful if you allow me to. Uh, oh, sure, you can, you can continue. Sorry. You can continue. Actually, sorry. Professor Mohammad has saved our time. You can continue. No problem. Thank you so much. Sir. So uh, uh, I am just in the noise over there. I don't know why the noise has come. Uh, my topic is uh, you know, you have fixed up the topic of this webinar is problems of teaching. Experience sharing on how to bridge the gap. Basically, your topic was problems of teaching, how to bridge the gap. But here, as I am going to share you my experience, I told you informally that yes, uh, last couple of months, we worked a lot, uh, especially on reducing the gap. We all know, we are the eyewitness as a teacher that uh, how this gap occurs during this pandemic situation. So. Again, this is my first slide. I'm going directly to my slide. And I think as long as I describe my, describe my slide, you know, I, will, I will raise uh, different issues that already been discussed. And something is still pending. So I will discuss it here. Uh, first of all, uh, I, I, I just would like to share my content with you. That is uh, here in a uh, short space, I will tell you global context, Bangladesh context, impact on education then new normal and transformation of education how we have been shifted in a new normal situation and objectives of the online class and what are the major problems basically this is the theme what are the major problems of teaching and what are the general problems of teaching and special problems we are facing during assessment in our assessment process so i will discuss it with you and finally uh, in my presentation i will show you how to bridge the gap and what we did basically as a dean of the national university it was uh, my, my privilege to share my idea um, uh, with all of you who are just watching this program live or in the uh, i mean uh, on the stage so best practices in bangladesh i will also mention here uh, which one was the best practice in bangladesh and some recommendations as well so first of all in a, a very Shortly, if I explain that, yes, global context, global context, we all are aware about global context that more than 30 million people infected, and nine lakhs people died. It, this is clear. And I think, uh, you know, uh, every day we are getting these statistics and uh, death toll is increasing. At the same time, infected rate is increasing. And global uh, GDP growth rate, that is 3.3 for 2020 which basically to slow to less than 2.9%. And now we are belonging that area, that, that era, what was in 1870. Basically, our economic situation is compared with that. 
and most countries are expected to face recessions again after 2018, uh, this 2020, and after 2020, most of the countries in the world, for your information, especially the developed countries, this is very ridiculous. If you see the statistics of the developed countries, I mean the recent statistics given by World Bank, it shows that yes, they again are going to face the recession. And half billion, I mean 50 crore people back into extreme poverty. Though it's the it, COVID-19 instant impact, we are not realizing, but it's long-term impact on economy, on health, on job market. It's, it's tremendous, it cannot be imaginable. So and another thing that is very true, that pandemic doesn't come alone. When any pandemic comes, it does not come alone. It brings two things simultaneously with it. One is infodemic, another one is epidemic. That is true, because when pandemic occurs, thousands of speculation, misinformation, wrong information, disinformation, fake information, occurs every day, every single time, and disseminated through social media and some other media as well. And at the same time, you know, this is 100, I mean, 200, 300 years uh, before treatment, we are still applying. And uh, living in this uh, technological era, still we are maintaining social distance, what maintaining uh, 100 years before. So lockdown, shutdown, and everything closed, I mean, tremendously hampered our economy. So pandemic never comes alone. We need to remember that when it comes simultaneously, it, it, it brings many things, but it focuses mainly on infodemic and epidemic. And uh, of course, uh, already you have mentioned that COVID-19 impacted severely on health, economy, job market, and education. I would like to mention here only job market, that yes, in Bangladesh, there are 20 million people become jobless. On the other hand, 4 million new jobs have been created in particular sector. In, in SME sector, our country, 17 lakhs people become jobless. On the other hand, ICT, health, nursing sector, and pharmaceutical sector, there are 4 lakhs jobs created. So, 4 million jobs created. So, a check and balance, but still, I think we are losing, losing, losing continuously. And what is the uh, country context you see? Around 3.45 lakhs people infected in Bangladesh, and nearly 5,000 people died. And it is also, recovery rate is very nice because uh, India, Bangladesh, we know recovery rate is very good, very good. But this is alarming that yes, still some developed countries are uh, failed to control the situation. And our GDP targeted was 5.5, though it was targeted earlier in eight, but we are not uh, just showing that they are that we will be eight in this situation. But for your information, two days before World Bank has given one uh, economic statistics. If you see the report, you will see the Bangladesh situation is ridiculous. It's magical. Like in 2008, when I mean the developed world faced the recession, we did not face that sort of recession. That's why people, especially from India, my friends, some of my friends sometimes ask me, why your economy is like a magical? What is the cause of it? Basically, the answer is people has their can-do attitude and people are working here. They don't care. Uh, but just like Calcutta, you know, they don't care anything because they have to earn something to survive themselves. That raises our economy. And uh, of course, uh, people are living capital city. It is true that, yes, some people are living. But economy re reopens. Uh, garments factory, industry, everything is reopens newly. But school college is still closed all over the world. And those uh, countries who have shown that they are that uh, to open the schools, but due to second wave and spreading, they have already shown their uh, school and colleges further. So in, in Bangladesh, we are still uh, watching the situation. Our government uh, is very keen, I think, is very potential uh, to uh, dominate, to operate all of the policies issues. As he, he, he just wants to uh, survive our nation, especially the new generation. So that's why we are not showing that there is to open the school. And uh, budget announces, meanwhile, a big budget we have announced, uh, especially focusing on health sector. And same pandemic, infodemic, and economic, this situation also we are facing in Bangladesh. And you see in my uh, another slide, what 
COVID-19 impacted on education sector. We all know the history that in 2019, Wuhan in China, first case was identified, it is now history. But in Bangladesh, 8 March 2020, first case was identified. And March 18, school college closed. First week of April 2020, informally started online class through Zoom. Some institutions, some professional institutions, very informally, they have started their online classes, but not in a formal software. And it, it was an unli unlicensed software. So uh, it, it was not formal at all. And second and third week of April 2020, few professional institutions again started it. Finally, 30th April 2020, a joint meeting occurred between Ministry of Education, UGC, and all public private universities. This is the first meeting after COVID-19 that government decided, ministry decided that yes, they will go for online education. There is no any alternative. Getting this decision, uh, second and third week, as a dean of the national research, this my management, my vice chancellor, my provost chancellor, and the body of the national university started series of meeting with college principals, teachers, and students. Uh, for uh, your information, I just would like to share you three for information here because National University, this is basically an affiliated university. It has 2,260 affiliated colleges. I will show you later on. And uh, we have 60,000 above teachers and 29 lakh students. So it is a, you, a large number of university in terms of students in the world. So, I mean, when educational institution closed, uh, students become frustrated so much. And teachers, students, guardian as well. Because, you know, most of the poor people, 70% of the poor people's children, I mean, I mean, their son and daughters, they're studying in national university. So this is really tough to keep it closed. So, uh, I mean, we decided to, uh, be, uh, change our views with principals, teachers, to know what they are saying. You know, we, uh, during our discussion, when we talk about teach, when we talk to the teachers, we got one result. But when we talk with the, our students separately, individually, we got another result. The findings was very peculiar that I will mention you later on. So, uh, this is the situation, basically, uh, that we have arrived in a new normal situation. And thus, it was the beginning of the transformation of the education system because most of the uh, students, teachers, guardians, they have just requested us to start online classes. That was the beginning of starting online class. And uh, we all aware about that. First of all, when the pandemic occurred, many, many organizations, many of personally uses this sort of apps and media. Somebody uses Zoom, Google Meet, Opera, Google Classroom. Messenger, YouTube, and some other some other uses radio, even as a uh, uh, I mean communicating tool as a television. You know our country, our government has started uh, primary and secondary education through television, terrestrial radio channels. This is also very important, and community radio also. They were also playing a very vital role uh, from the beginning of the COVID-19. So, uh, haphazardly. More than 10 to 12 apps and softwares were used for online classes. And there was no any unique system that has been described by UGC or Ministry of Education for Higher Education. So we, we, we also uh, faced a big problem for that. Uh, here we need, I need to mention here the objectives of the online teaching. Why online teaching needed? This is a very important. And when we just motivate our students because my previous speaker said the student need to motivate to come to that class. So when we just motivate our student, we need to say something about this. What is the objective? What they will learn? How they will learn? How he will be benefited from it? So we need to learn the objective first to create self-innovation or metacognition. This is very important. Metacognition will never be prevailed if, if we don't create any uh, knowledge together, students and teachers. Because I will give him a one example. If he does not explore four or five re related examples, then his learning will not be fill up, I think. This is the way. So he needs metacognition. Both parties, students and teachers need metacognition. 
and students must be innovative because higher study students always never depends on curriculum and face to face class you will have to search many things and to engage and collaborate of course online classes online teaching is important objective is engage and collaborate to recreate and co create the knowledge most importantly i would like to mention that online teaching is learning to learn and thinking to think vice versa to establish an online platform for effective communication to provide quality education by an easy area this is this is very common but of course you have to you all have to agree that yes there is a lot of advantages on online classes online teaching which is absurd in face to face classes i would like to give you an example that if i want to show my students sahara desert this is impossible to uh, describe in the face to face class but through screen share i can do it very easily to show them that yes this is sahara especially for the science math and uh, uh, i mean uh, the commerce students uh, this is difficult uh, i think uh, i will let you know in my next slide i will explain about it overall to reach the students as a replica of the face to face class we need to convince them that yes this is the replica of the face to face class some of the teachers you know uh, those who have some uh, technology phobia technology scaredness they are telling that yes it may not be the replica uh, it will be the complementary or supplementary of the face to face education uh, uh, not as like as comp replica or something like this but i disagree with them within this seven or eight months online education almost proved that it has already been a replica of the face to face education but we are missing the most chemistry of the face to face class with our students the chemistry we are missing that is not possible through online class that is very important so uh, the major point is what are the key problems today's topic for online teaching my question is before asking to my students or guardian or somewhere else i need to ask myself are we ready for that are we ready or ready ourselves for uh, facing this sort of problem i mean online education is a challenge why i am asking you this question you know because in every step of our regular activities right now we are facing this problem mindset of the teachers we cannot change the mindset of the teachers i am not i am not telling about all teachers i am just telling about particular group of teachers earlier i mentioned that who has technology phobia or psychological barrier on technology that he may lose his job or something like this so the mindset of the teacher is very important because traditional approach they are always preferring face to face class and that 300 years before uh, the system chalk and talk method it has come 300 years before so the same system they are habituated they are not taking anything newly they are not showing any dearness to receive any newliness and the scared on developing pedagogy earlier professor udoy to about the clearly mentioned that yes this is the main thing pedagogy development is very very important i mean uh, mahapatra sir also mentioned that designing pedagogy we have to spend maximum time to develop our pedagogy it this is reality but are every teachers ready with their pedagogy to reach their student impossible because of their mentality he knows you know i would like to share one thing that some of our young teachers they have done their degree in abroad i mean especially latin america america and some good countries they know how to develop pedagogy they did it with their supervisor as well but as long as they have come back in bangladesh have come back in their own university joined over there they are not delivering it to their students because of their inertia they don't they don't like to share because they think that the students will not be able to understand they think it so this is the main problem that they know but they do, they don't want to deliver this is the reality so lack of can do attitude is also responsible for this and not having knowledge on content development especially how to make slides powerpoint slides and uh, especially how to 
how to deliver how to uh, fix up some ICTs for delivering lectures and uh, uh, through Zoom or some other softwares and internet connectivity as well. So a continuation of this slide is uh, you know that is uh, pedagogy development I told they need to know how to concise and precise the course because face to face class you have for full credit courses you have to take 50 or 60 lectures 50 minutes or 40 minutes for four credit courses we are taking more than 40 classes but this is quite impossible through online classes so every teachers who are uh, facing this problem who would like to deliver his lecture through online he needs to uh, concise and precise his syllabus and for this you will have to march two or three units in one chapter this is the way that we have made and we got successful uh, showing this experience and lack of teachers training program on pedagogy yes the maximum teachers said we have no any training on pedagogy how to develop it teachers know but don't want to teach that i mentioned earlier problems in teaching recruitment procedures that's why we have just uh, recommended our ugc that yes recruitment process should be uh, done very carefully those teachers should be selected who are capable uh, who has ict literate who are capable to uh, 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 design their content design especially there will be a viva or written systems and presentation systems in bangladesh earlier it was absent you know the new government our this government has fixed up written viva and presentation method for being a teacher so it's okay right now and most of the teachers have not any lms training uh, they have no any lms training this is also the problem another one is psychological variant here you know, that i told you and plagiarism issue plagiarism is very important because when teacher just cut and paste slide from google youtube or anywhere else and as long as they deliver it to the students students are too smart sometimes some students are smarter than us they can easily catch up it they can easily match it with other they sometimes we have seen we are in our experience we have seen that big problems occur for this issue so i'm requesting all of the teachers uh, don't do it because our students are very much concerned about it and copyright and intellectual property rights discussion is very important and proper referencing this is also very important proper referencing in pedagogy because i need to give him some example uh, uh, so that he can get easily access over there so these are the problems from teacher side i think maximum problem messed with my previous uh, my speaker the same problem but what about the students from a student side i would like to say the difficulties is does not know online learning protocols this is problem because they don't have any training nobody knows about pandemic of a blended method everybody knows because 50 percent online 50 percent face to face we were habituated on it but total activities 100 percent activities should be converted on online activities we as a teacher are not ready for that and students are totally not so they don't know the protocol how they will join even how unmute their microphone how they will sit over there in 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 a class in a zoom class in a, in a video google meet class they don't know actually the protocols this is the main problem and habituated to take part in face to they are also always face to face class they are habituated they have also some psychological barrier to accept the newness and uh, uh, this is very interesting they have spent money i mean they have given the full registration fee why they will come online classes they they, they are thinking that yes it will a great lo loss for us uh, they will their their education will be hampered because they have given money to the uh, institution for face to face class but why they will now go for online this is their mindset that mindset we need to change through motivation and they're scared about grading system every every time they are thinking our students are thinking that if it happens through online they are grading may be hampered face to face class if we see that they are regularly coming in the class they are participating they are giving sounds so students perception is that we will give them a good marks or it is one of the quality to get a good marks but as online system is totally uh, different from the system that's why they are thinking that they may they may be victimized this is their also wrong perception and is scared for wrong assessment i am mentioning that impossible to understand science math and uh, especially the commerce classes without using board they said they are giving us 
complain that there's some derivation we have in our class, so it is impossible. But in Google, I think in Google Meet, in Zoom, in everywhere, if everyone can use whiteboard. Even if you take your class through Zoom, through Google Meet, you can use manual board as well. Uh, I will show practically that thing. And think that it is expensive, but less effective. The students' perception is like that, which is quite wrong. They think that this is expensive because they need bandwidth, they need technology, they need internet connectivity, uh, but it is less effective, they're thinking. Lack of smartphone and bandwidth is a common problem, you know, and digital divide, uh, some on my previous speaker said, yes, digital divide is the main reason because it, it is it has happened from urban to rural, rural to remote rural, this discrimination happening. And even the natural disaster, you know, most of the areas, they cannot access into the ICTs. Even having ICTs, they cannot access up there. So digital divide happened, discrimination occurred, and we need to reduce it uh, using some me 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 mechanism. And schedule disruption is also very important, Karam, because you know schedule disruption, frequently schedule disruption, students are not ready for that. So it creates a uh, problem for them. And lack, lack of proper collaboration, this is important. Lack of metacognition that I have mentioned. So I'm going a little bit faster. Uh, so, student teachers part has gone. Now we need to see both. We are ready for ready with our technology. I mean, first one has student a teacher mindset, second one students mindset, third one for both parts we need technology. Are technology ready for us? Different apps. Which one we will choose? Smartphone, PC, laptop. This is very common. You know, internet connectivity is needed. Sufficient bandwidth is also needed. Training knowledge about learning management system is also needed. Continuous power supply. This is the root cause of all sorts of services. It's needed. Discrimination and digital divide happened that I mentioned earlier. And ready to shift another network. It is a technological barrier happened every single time. It, it can be happened. So students or teachers need to fix up two, three network. I mean, hotspot or some other bandwidth they need to uh, fix up for a continuation uh, uh, keeping continuation. That's why in Bangladesh, we did a good job with our ministry uh, based on our proposal. All, all teachers, all universities proposal, government, UGC, they agreed to make a good agreement with uh, uh, our phone companies that they have already really reduced the bandwidth price and the students are now bandwidth. Now, if any student in Bangladesh have 100 taka, uh, uh just he, in his mobile he will get all the band he can he can download at least uh, at best 5 gb uh, free of cost government has uh, made it uh, flexible for all of the students very recently so general problems uh, it's, it has already gone in our discussion i will show you our part lack of readiness lack of institutional policy this is important sometimes policy never permits to take online classes so uh, because the university are not ready for that now they are adopting some policies new technologies and frequent class routine change i told you face-to-face -face class is two-dimensional whereas students think that uh, um, i think face-to-face -face class is two-dimensional and online class is one-dimensional this is the perception problem of these students it, this is also a problem and lack of content safety option many of the uh, colleagues many of our friends many of our teachers asked um, would my content would be safety? It is not financial dealings. I am I am just telling for them. It is not financial dealings. It is not bank. It is knowledge must be shared with others. So if anybody uh, just uh, use your content, what is the problem? I think I, I think there is no any problem with it if you give them the copyright and referencing related materials from other supporting server. That problem we are facing. When we take our online class, some ebook we are referencing from other uh, uh, supporting server. That server is not freely accessible for my student because they are not the member of it. It creates a big problem to uh, get knowledge for our students. It is creating a big problem. So these sort of general problems we have assessed. And uh, assessment, in our assessment, we also found this problem, you see. Uh, what will be the questions part? I mean moderation, how we will do it. The authority will not permit us to do moderation uh, through online. And now our health and our, our, our ministry 
at the same time our pandemic situation never permits it to do it face to face so we are in a dilemma what we should do how we will go for it moderation is a very confidential thing that must be done by teacher you all know about it so it cannot be done through online it is the central permission central rule i know so how can we go about there it's a big problem question patterns what will be the question patterns mcq as a type short question what will be the there is no any still recognized standard for any universities as of today i think and what will be the question system delivery system and for your information i have mentioned here that we are conducting 130 a public exams per year 130 public exams for 29 lakh students so face to face we need so many classes so many uh, classrooms i mean exam halls we are using online is absurd it's impossible i'm giving you that example but of course it is possible how let me see thinking about group ppt and uh, we are now thinking about that yes moderation can be done through group ppt in a in a in a, a room maintaining social distance and uh, we are also thinking about our assessment uh, process research paper term paper projects etc etc and we are also uh, circulating strict notice about plagiarism that cannot be done and most of the teachers have given us consent about mcq system this is good right now and some have suggested us to go for scene paper like our ddc you know this is scene paper uh, that students uh, we will give them all of the documents they will insert the right thing on the uh, uh, right questions so we are about thinking about it i am just uh, arriving in my ending slides two or three two three slides i have in my hand to bridge the gap our mission <laughs> excuse me what we did this is the slide you see uh our total affiliated college is 2260 we have four programs five faculties 31 subject throughout the country and 29 lakh students i told you that we have 60000 of teachers and 80 on campus teachers to uh, for them just three months before for three, two months before we started working for them to prepare online video documentaries uh using some mechanisms and we have selected 49 coordinators and selected 1558 courses total resource person we have seen selected 1500 uh, i mean 1558 and we have prepared 17500 video lectures that i told how you see it was a project basically taken by national university i told you earlier it's, it's a story because when government announced press release that all education institutions should take their online classes we we uh, exchanged our views with teachers and students students suggested us most of the students suggested us that yes sir in a unique system if you take all of our courses we will be benefited through online don't make any discrimination please sir if you do it centrally then we will be benefited then our vice chancellor took their suggestion discussed it with ministry ucc allocated funding for them then i myself as a chief coordinator it was my it was i i am lucky enough that i was the chief coordinator of this program and still the work is going on mostly done uh, some still pending you see what we did over there uh, any online video class lecture this is the best practice in bangladesh as of today because you will not see in a large scale that huge amount of lectures have been made within this one month or two months so the national university emergency project during covid 19 uh, in uh, 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 national university uh, you know how did we uh, do the work just to let you know we have we formed an implementation committee and another one is dins committee another uh, uh, committee we form coordinators and resource person and uh, this is just the way how we work over there we prepare guideline 
we prepare we survey 66 colleges and found differences of opinions between teacher and students because teacher every time says we are okay we are doing right thing etc etc but reality is different reality has come from students uh, uh, space and uh, uh, the guideline committee i mean the implementation committee have submitted a comprehensive report recommending a dean's committee to take action and they have also allocated the fund fund for it uh dean's committee series they did series of meeting and selected uh coordinators and resource person if there is a long process i'm not going over there prepare manual how to make the video it's a it's a nice thing that uh, we have arrived to all of our resource person and watching this even a layman can do a, a layman can prepare a video and selection criteria and selection process done 49 coordinators we have assigned and uh, 1,558 resource person we have nominated. And one-to-one -one communication maintained between coordinators and resource persons. And uh, we oriented them about sending options, how to make the videos and how to send. And problem discussed and solved. Uh, time to time we were with, still we are connecting with them. We are, we, our server, our technology completely separated uh, to, main, to, to do this work. And access the lectures quality and adaptability for the upload. Before uploading, we are just assessing all of the uh, lectures, its quality, sound quality, its video content, and even the sensitive items also. Because in a, a vested group, you know, uh, maybe some vested teachers, some vested resource person can uh, upload something uh, which is politically motivated or something like this, which is highly sensitive. So that's thing we are uh, editing, we are listening, and we have given them uh, our guideline clearly mentioned that please don't go for that. So we are just assessing the quality as well. And copyright action, copyright and plagiarism issues we are also discussing with them. And student, how they will access over there, we are giving them uh, that options. Finally, you see uploaded 17,500 videos lecture on 31 subjects uh, on uh, 1,558 resource person on four programs. Especially we uh, in four programs, honors, master's, PLE, and uh, uh, degree pass course. But we prepared it for honors and master's, 70,500. And our next mission, next phase, will be go on trillion. Thus, you see, the project turned as a vast accumulation of knowledge in Bangladesh. And 29, uh, I mean, million students are getting ready for that. Sorry, 2.9 million students. Here, 2.9 million students are getting ready for trillion. This is the slide. You will see uh, in Bangla, I have mentioned that because most of our guideline we have prepared in our own country, own languages. This is the template that we have made for our resource person. We have corresponding with, and in this template, we have fixed up this thing. That these slides must be mentioned in their pedagogy, it comes first. They will mention in why, on which topic, on which program, on which courses, etc. etc. Every teacher, resource person, I mean, the 1500, 58 resource person followed the same thing. And uh, you see online a video lecture for the upload from for guideline. This is in Bangla. Uh, I am telling you the guideline specifically. We have mentioned how he will uh, make the video. We have we prescribed only one software that is Zoom. But uh, on when uploading something, we are getting uh, just few, very few lectures to other channels. We are refusing that, get, getting them back to make it again. And for your information, there is a lump sum amount of remuneration we are offering for every teacher, for every lecture. Every teacher will get 1,000 takas. So each teacher will give 10 lectures. If he is a teacher of arts and social science, if he is a teacher of commerce, then he will give 12 lectures. If he or she is a teacher of science, she or he will give uh, will given 15 lectures because she has practical, he or she has practical. So thus we have prepared our guideline. And it's a huge amount we are spending, though it is a huge amount in this sense, because uh, 1,500, 58 resource person will get uh, at least 12,000 uh, uh, taka for their lectures. Our university is spending this money for the convenience of our students. And government appreciated. Then for your information, just last month, in 27th August, our education minister, Dr. Deepu Muni, has inaugurated this program. Uh, and it, it has it has just countrywide it has regulated lost you know seriously uh, uh, trust the students mind uh, they are very very much uh, motivated by this 
uh, lectures. And uh, we, in our server, we have just prepared one tree to disseminate this arrangement of a new digital archive. This digital archive we have prepared for our student. Student can access what there is. It is available now online in YouTube. I will give you the link. You please go over there. And if you are, if you desire to see the live, see lecture of library science, you can see the lecture of political science, sociology, economics. I mean, 31 subjects you will get over there. And uh, we did not finish our uploading yet because we have deadline on 15th of October. So up to 15th of October, video is coming. And uh, we are uh, just uh, uh, how students will get it. We are giving them the subject name, subject year, code. One year student will not be ex get access to other year student. So this restriction we are making. And uh, you see advantage of a new video class lecture. What will be the advantages? Of course, created a rare subject piece archive and can be used as a supplementary storehouse of knowledge during and after COVID-19. We are, Though we are preparing it for COVID-19, but if we don't make our syllabus change within 10 to 15 years, that same content will be continued. And that, that is very important that we have asked our teachers to make all of the uh, course content within 10, 12, and 15 lectures. We confined them and all they all did it. Students will get lecture delivered by skill. And it is, it is a good opportunity for students because one college uh, students are not uh, capable to listen the mostly reputed college teachers lecture because it, it was confined within classroom. Now it's open. So they are capable now. They are, they are happy enough that they are getting uh, the good lectures from a good resource person. <laughs> Students can get, get access uh, from anywhere, anytime in any adverse situation. Adverse means in any natural disaster or anywhere. The students can accelerate his knowledge through getting his or her desired renowned resource person from college and national university. Uh, overall, this storehouse of online lecture will help to construct a trained digital human resources which lead to make digital Bangladesh. It's a dream that our prime minister have just started working from 2008 and we are almost arrived in our destination. That is, even, uh, even for your information, even a very lame and even a rickshaw puller he knows how to deal with some little bit technology. So this is the thing that we achieved within a short period of time. So uh, it will help us to make our digital Bangladesh. And for your information, here's the link I will show you. Still uploading is going on and the deadline is on 15th October, I told you. So if you, uh, if, I, if I click here, what will come, I don't know, I, I need to check it. Yes, uh, please, is there anyone to respond to me? I am audible. Yeah, audible, fully audible, 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 no problem. Okay, sir. So this is the dummy. This is the dummy that uh, where we have preserved all of our lectures. Uh, this is a new EduTube. We have uh, uh, just uh, opened another YouTube channel for our video lectures. So it's coming. I, I think it will take a little bit time. Uh, if you permit me, I, I will go. My presentation then later on, I will, I will show you something. So uh, this is the way that you see. Finally, to bridge the gap, my recommendation is no alternative except online class. It's, it should be kept in our mind every time. And uh, mindset should be changed of the teachers, the students, even in the guardian as well, because guardian does not want to pay his uh, son or daughter a bandwidth fee or something like this, because it is difficult to make them understand, understand a bit clearer. Pedagogy, this is important and we need to develop it. We need to know how to develop. Syllabus concise and lecture shortest because it is online. It is not face to face. ICT literate and technologically sound, technologically sound this is true. Device and accessories available, even, uh, even start student room. And this is important because we heard that from our students that 15% of our students have not smartphone. So we decided to give them subsidy from our university. Government decided to give them internet bandwidth free of cost. And we also decided to give them uh, the, the tab or the smartphone cost uh, as a subsidy basis from our foreign fluff or from their 
uh, I think uh, admission charts, it will be adjusted. And BDN, you know, we have BDN. BDN means BDN is one of the organization operated by UGC. It has given uh, Zoom link unlimited time throughout all of the teachers in the country. They can conduct any sorts of meeting free of cost. BDN has given it. So we even we also maintain all of the things is through BDN. This is from UGC. And internet connectivity is important, bandwidth free for our cheaper. And as per our demand, government has already made it free. And uh, institutional policy should be easier. And way out centrally assessment process. It is still, it is a very challenging. So we need to uh, fix up some assessment process. We are we are working on it because we, as long, we think that on 15th October, all lectures will come and students will just uh, go through on it up to December. And from next year, January to February, uh, we have that preparation to uh, conduct their exams you know, through online. In a, we already started in a short scale, some short exams, but in a larger scale, we will start. It. So finally, this is a joke uh, that because you all feel very boring uh, as you all with me since long. So it's I think many of you know this uh, high tech society's story jokes that you know the dad i mean girl said to her dad i have fallen in love with a boy who is so cute he's so far away from me i am in university of colombo and he is in mit usa i mean girl she just said his father that papa i would like to get married so father said how did you choose a boy she said i uh, familiar with him through facebook and through whatsapp we have given some photos and through viber we have exchange our views and through Skype, we have seen ourselves. Then father instantly said, okay, okay, please go married on Twitter, have fun on Tango, get your kids from eBay, deliver them through Dropbox. And oh yes, if you get tired of him, do us, sell him on OLX. I mean, father is smarter than her, than his girl. So my message is, if pandemic could transform our daily life, society and institutions, why? Why should we, the teachers, also not change ourselves? We must have to change ourselves because this is the new normal situation. Everything has changed. If you see your kids who stays in home, who is just creating uh, many creative works, staying in home. So why not we? We as a teacher have many things to do. Thank you very much for patience listening to me. I am grateful to you. Thanks. Uh, all of the organizers and thanks participants. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, Mithul Shai, for your beautiful speech. We all know under the leadership of Madam Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, Bangladesh is progressing very fast. And Mithul Shai showed, showed some uh, glimpses of this development. And um, from his lecture, we come to know about the how they are facing the pandemic and how they are preparing to bridge the divides persisted, persisting among the students and the teachers. So we are very much fortunate to have a nice speech from Dr. Mohammad Nasiruddin Nitu. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Now, Pranav is principal is there. Yeah, please. Yes, Due to an emergency work, our principal sir, Dr. Prashant Bhattacharya, did not join at the inaugural part of this webinar. Now he has joined to us. I would request our principal sir to deliver his speech. Sir, please. Can you hear me all? Ah, no. sure, you're audible, sir. You are sure. fully audible. Ah. Okay, thank you. Uh, I mean, uh, my kind of entry right now is rather like a disruption because things have already started and the ball has started rolling pretty early back. So my honest apology to all my uh, dear colleagues and the honorable guests and the coordinator, Professor Bhattacharya, who has uh, decided once again to come and join us and, you know, coordinate on our behalf. Uh, this kind of a program. So thank you very much, sir, and all the other guests who hail from different universities 
not only from India but also from Bangladesh. I have been listening to the kind of argument that Professor Mithul has been making right now, and he is very positive about the uh, possible good effects of uh, you know adopting this kind of digital mode of learning and teaching. And uh, well, uh, uh, I I won't take much time uh, because. Uh, I'm I'm not supposed to be a speaker over here. My role has been to just to let things you know move along and uh, do my kind of little bit as the administrator who is just at the helm of the institutional affairs. So it is by default by my position as the institutional principal that I'm over here. And uh, sorry once again for joining so late because I had some other commitments, so I have conveyed the whole thing to Pranobi. Uh, anyway, you see, uh, since so many experts have gathered over on this particular platform to have their own kind of exchanges and you know convey their own kinds of messages, not only to our students but to the teaching community as well, I feel myself rather quite out of place because I am just an administrator and uh, not only that, my role in this digital media is only that of a user. And that also a very kind of minuscule and negligible user. I never consider myself as an innovator or uh, a kind of a thinker who could really meaningfully contribute to this fast developing field. Uh, but some of my general ideas about how we are moving and how we are trying to cope up with this present crisis, uh, we can take pride in this very fact that uh, we have been among the first ones to have started uh, this teaching learning process on a digital platform. When things have not got any kind of a shape, this is not in proper shape right now. A typical ad hocism is basically uh, characterizing all our action. Uh, if we teachers are so much confused, if the authority is so much confused because the situation is so very unprecedented, just think of our dear students, how much confused they would be in such a kind of a situation anyway. But still, we are coming up with our own kinds of solution, which may vary a little from institution to institution, from country to country depending upon the other important social and historical factors, like uh, Professor Mohapatro has been pointing out or Professor Mithul has uh, you know, deliberated on those aspects or issues. And we all know about the uh, difficulties of digital divide, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the, the, the economic means by which one can at least have an access to a smartphone or at least one has to buy a data pack in order to join the classroom uh, in whichever mode it is being held right now in this present atmosphere. And yes, uh, what I feel in my gradually marginalized role as a teacher, because still I love to consider myself as a teacher, uh, is, the, is the absence of this physical contact. What I'm suggesting is this lack of human touch, because you see, uh, traditionally, our teaching learning has been the pedagogic, the entire pedagogic engagement has been in terms of a two way traffic. Well, uh, so many uh, previous, uh, I mean, the other previous speakers have been also talking in terms of this. Uh, but nowadays, strangely enough, it has become almost a kind of a one way traffic. I mean, I am out here, I am just delivering my own kind of talk, not knowing fully what the other listeners are or the other viewers are doing right now, whether they're at all interested or not, whether they do feel that the program should stop right now or it should continue, et cetera, et cetera. So all these problems are there and uh, it has its kind of psychological corollary as well, because as human beings, we have the most developed and the most complex mind uh, in, this, in this entire uh, pyramid of the animal world. We are at the acme, we are always on top, but this position, this privilege of being at the top, 
uh, also has uh, given us uh, some kind of attitudinizing which also may sometimes create a lot of problem i mean uh, the quickness by which we get adapted to a new situation may vary from community to community from person to person etc cetera, etc cetera. Uh, in one recent newspaper article i have come across one very uh, eminent principal of a kolkata college no sorry he she is from a very uh, highly esteemed kolkata english medium school and uh, she is of this opinion that only recently she has come across some photographs in a school in china and also one uh in in some of the in in one european country where the students are made to sit at a distance from each other and they were having their tiffin by opening the tiffin box and she was ruining this very fact that this entire chemistry of close physical intimacy and interaction between students which many educationists think is an integral part of our entire holistic growth as a human being is desperately missing in this present situation uh, but uh, as as uh, professor mithul has suggested there is no other solution that we have right now so we just can't uh, move along and uh, we are uh, just uh, trying to uh, at best cope up with this present situation and uh, uh, let things carry have their own kind of course so that uh, it may uh, have its own kind of you know final outcome which we hope that at least will be good for us so i i no longer want to continue uh, i have some uh, some other things to say or suggest but uh, right now i think uh, uh, it's 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 like detaining the whole program so uh, i i just ask the coordinator the honorable coordinator coordinator to take us to the next uh, session i mean the next step of the present proceedings thank you very much and welcome to my honorable guests and pranavi and the others at whose behest and the iqsc coordinator at whose behest the entire program is, is being held so thank you very much thank you sir thank you very much thank you sir uh, now i would like to request our uh, honorable sir udan bhata sir please to carry on the program please sir over thank to you thank you thank you professor bhatacharya you are absolutely correct i am missing my students almost 6 months thank you sir so it is it is very much painful to all of us we are teachers so we are missing our students we have only chats and whatsapp messages and few online classes through the digital mode no chalk and no talk no eye contact no gesture no posture so it is absolutely very blurred situation i don't know i have do not have any idea i think anyone do not have idea when to open when we are going to open our institution and uh, when we are going to see our students our colleagues our sub staffs and other members of the academic institutions in it is really a painful moment for all of us uh, i acknowledge your concern our next speaker is professor ranjit kumar choudhury professor choudhury is a head university and university library in charge at mahatma gandhi central university motihari bihar in fact professor choudhury is a very very dynamic person and he is a very good friend to me also almost more than 14 years in teaching and uh, three of his scholar already awarded phd and third in mp scholar and uh, through dissertation he has already supervised is an innumerable number of research papers published in national and international journals and he is a member of so many scientific bodies so i am requesting professor choudhury to deliver his lecture please sir start your lecture thank you sir i am audible sir 
yes fully audible fully okay. audible and visible thank you, also, sir. Thank no you. problem <laughs> thank you sir thank you. respected honorable principal sir and dr nasiruddin uh, professor mam batra and uh, peer amit ji and entire the organizing committee thank you for giving a chance to deliver my lecture actually i am come back from lucknow to motihari on the way last day meet uh, professor bhattacharya sir and i am uh, going from uh, motihari to lucknow but this time i am coming back so uh, my topic is the bridging the gaps to improve teaching first uh, fielding carrer and roger said excellent leadership excellent initial instruction and excellent data system have always been essential pieces of high performance educational institutes proportional increases in instruction time focused teaching to the deficient sub skills and restate testing to assure that learning has actually occurred are common sense strategies and central to how to catch up students who are behind this is the called by rogier and kant so i want to discuss about the higher education the higher education system need to rethink the way teaching content is delivered to face the evolution of education and back through in educational online services one way in which systems can innovate is by allowing students to apply their knowledge to real problems the benefits are dual the students work on highly innovative topics and real examples and for teaching staffs there is a seamless integration of their works into their teaching objectives first is educator relationship second parent involvement at home third parent teacher communication so educator relationship means teachers and families like have important roles in the students learning development the family is the expert on the student the teacher is the expert on curriculum both are educators and both are significant second is the parent involvement at home encouraging family involvement is crucial and can be effective in any home no matter the language income or family structure families should feel confident in supporting their students to be achievers in order to reinforce that they learn in the classroom third the parent teacher communication it is critical for parents and teachers to communicate effectively and positively before beginning discussions about the academics next slide please uh, need and purpose the basically four needs first the culture change required for effective quality teaching and the practice of good pedagogy second assurance of learning is assessed and measured through the success of curricula to be appropriately aligned to meet all necessary components to assure learning professional standards learning outcomes and graduate attributes third one e learning more specifically blended learning is supplementary to face to face as a pedagogy for the 21st century learner and fourth point the reflection by the students reflection means that uh, uh, student shows that he is aware about the information or knowledge next student success initiatives first is family school community partnerships second communication strategies promote at home learning access to technology actually basically the gap between the education and the uh, knowledge it will be benefits so we can uh, take initiatives for the family school community communication studies promote at home learning and access to the technology next please teachers used to bridge learning gaps first chat and their previous teacher chat with their previous teacher review previous summative assessment and group or one on one student interviews this is the basic points how to fill the gaps next criteria for learning activities first make the learning activity safe 
make the learning activity a successful experience make the learning activity interesting make the learning activity personal and make the learning activity relevant the systematic approach to the teaching first you should select the selection for any topic any subject then explain explore and consolidate s w e c this is a systematic approach to teaching so in a learning environment where we constantly trying to connect to our students and to ensure the understand and can apply the content thank you sir thank you organizing committee so professor choudhary you are in the car yes sir i am uh, actually going from lucknow to motihari oh ho oh, oh, ho we are traveling so you are traveling <laughs> oh, you are going from yeah, last... the uh, residence to your work place from uh, lucknow to motihari yes sir on the uh, way last actually year, i am uh, yesterday when we met uh, you are uh, tra- you are also on transit from motihari to lucknow lucknow yes sir. actually some oh, urgent okay, work okay. there so please safe <laughs> drive safely also okay so thank this, you sir thank you okay i have to stop any more so thank you for your deliberation now i am requesting the next speaker the last speaker is dr amit kumar amit kumar is assistant professor of library department of library and information science bizaram university this is also a central university uh, more than 7 years he is in teaching he obtained his phd degree from mizoram university uh, he has interest zone various interest interest zone like inform uh, edu- uh, sentiment analysis itg application is lis marketing lis that is the marketing of uh, information products and he has completed one major projects funded by icssr new delhi and he is a very young professional award to th- oh he is a recipient of young professional award 2017, 2017 by society of library professional new delhi and now i am requesting dr kumar to deliver his lecture dr kumar please hello ah yes audible. sir you are audible la yeah. okay okay sir okay sir. thank you so much sir for introducing me with the such beautiful words uh, i do not know whether i deserve such words or not but i would take your words as your love and blessings so a very good evening to all viewers i hope you are all are fine and staying safe with your family and loved ones at the outset let me have the privilege to thank the organizers especially dr pranobi porel who is convener of this today's program and professor udyan bhattacharya sir who is moderator for today's program for inviting me for this international webinar on such an excellent thing that is problems of teaching how to bridge the gap and i convey my sincere regards to dr prasanta bhattacharya sir principal of rabindra mahavidyalaya and other panelist professor tanmay bandopadhyay ji dr mohammad nasruddin mithul ji and professor rk choudhary and dr rk mahapatra sir as well so now let me come to the topic of today's discussion that is problems of teaching how to bridge the gap in my short talk i'll be discussing the problems of teaching and how to overcome these problems although other panelists have already touched upon almost all the issues or problems of teaching and how to resolve these as well sometimes uh, friends it, uh, be- uh, it it become difficult for the last speaker to speak as other speakers do not leave any of the single point for the last speaker to discuss but anyhow i'll, I'll try to add some uh, few more uh, few more uh, more points to uh, the discussion so in my or- original speech i wanted to uh, discuss uh, the uh, i wanted to discuss uh, to uh, this separate uh, separately the teaching problems in corona pandemic and in general although the other speakers have already discussed the uh, teaching problems in uh, during this corona pandemic so i feel that i i should skip uh this uh, this part of my uh, speech so i uh, better i should come to uh, the general problems of teaching so friends uh, teaching uh, it has been the noble uh, professions from its beginning and the role also 
has been keep on changing today in 21st century which is called uh, information society uh, society also keeping in view the requirement of the society the role is again ch change of the of teachers and now the teachers are expected to have much more broader roles as they had earlier so the expectations from the society are uh, called as problems of teaching if we do not fit into those expectations so here the role of teacher is important or what he is supposed to perform in society to make learning a purposeful one so when we discuss about uh, the problems of teaching in uh, general the first uh, the first and foremost uh, foremost point that comes to my mind is uh, the syllabus uh, updation or revision although the uh, mapatra sir and uh, other speakers also they raised this issue the uh, updation and uh, this revision of syllabus i do feel that in general also this is the problem of teaching in most of the universities uh, what we find that we are running with the you know uh, three or four years old syllabus that need to be that need to be revised uh, that need, uh, need to be revised and uh, see and uh, just like this iits and i am almost every year they revise but in university level colleges even uh, some of the colleges uh, i won't take name uh, they are running with uh, you know uh, uh, five year more than five years old syllabus so that is uh, the big issue that uh, should be you know resolved and uh, in uh, the, when the revision of syllabus in this process the uh, theory and practical the ratio between theory and uh, uh, practical aspects should be take, uh, taken care and some of the you know common subject which are general in nature should be in included uh, while revising the syllabus like uh, personality development and communication skills can be one of one of them because most of the students they are you know uh, they uh, because of their shy nature or uh, they are weak in communication so uh, uh, this type of subjects and some motivational subjects are also also required so uh, th th that should be done then second uh, second point is reach at individual level so make the learning activities personal means allow the student to make their own choices and reflect with them on how their biases and reliefs affected what they did means uh, the students the teacher they are expert they are uh, specialized in the in the in their subject so sometimes what happens they go in the class and they you know uh, teach uh, the class according to their own level they forget about they do not uh, hardly they care about the student level so we have to you know uh, reach to the level of each and every student now the days have gone when uh, the uh, the same uh, attitude attitude was you know uh, uh, means acceptable but now each and every student you have to take care of each and every student like uh, i uh, i would give uh, one uh, beautiful ex example from uh, mahabharata see uh, see uh, the korvas and pandavas the uh, teacher for uh, both was same guru dronacharya and uh, pandavas the five brothers in mahabharat uh, mahabharata the guru teacher was same guru dronacharya but he trained arjuna in bow, uh, bow and arrows and bhim in gada and so on so that kind of you know uh, in uh, that kind of individuality the reach out to the student individuality is required whatever their interest how they would like to learn that kind of thing must must be there and uh, the next point uh, make the learning safe that is also very much required sometimes uh, you know we have to create the environment in the uh, learning space or class classroom so that uh, you know a student feel safe safe in the sense sometimes a teacher ask questions in uh, class and suppose if a student they you know respond uh, in a wrong way or wrong answer they they give or some sometimes they speak you know something silly so we should not you know humiliate them or we, or we should not humiliate them or we should not scold them sometimes they take it seriously so that kind of safe environment means the they must have the feeling that whatever i say whatever i say it's fine okay so the teacher is not go, not going to you know scold or not going to insult that kind of safe environment and uh, personally personally i do i do this in my class sometimes the, the student those who are having some communication problems uh, i i just ask other student to you know say uh, 
say uh, translate actually first i asked that you okay you know but you have language barrier you speak in your local language them uh, because i do not know their local language other student i asked them to translate in english if it is correct i appreciate so that kind of uh, safe environment uh, must be created by uh, the teacher then uh, the next point comes uh, to my mind that uh, make the learning activity a successful experience even uh, uh, not only students even teachers are also their le uh, learner for uh, you know li lifetime they learn uh, li lifetime we also commit mistake we learn uh, by trial and error method so the ultimate objective must um, must be the uh, success even after 100 mistakes so that kind of uh, you know experience means successful experience after even after 100 mistakes the uh, target must uh, must be to achieve uh, the success that kind of ex uh, environment we need to create then uh, the application based training that is also very much uh, impo important point uh, the impact uh, impact of the topic should be correlated to the real uh, to, uh, to the real problem so that the student they can visualize the impact of the topic uh, for uh, to uh, for better understanding i give one example as in our uh, library science uh, discipline when i was a student one of uh, the student known to me uh, he was senior to me he he got the job in uh, you know bank i asked how your job is going on so he said uh, there is nothing to do there are no books there are no books what to do so see this is a, this is happening actually in uh, subject in maybe in other subject also so actually in class also we need to create the real time uh, you know real uh, environment of real problems how to face so that uh, when they are in uh, their job they uh, do not find any you know difficulty the next is at the level of parents and wider community now the uh, days have gone when uh, the teachers uh, uh, were you know the learning uh, process was you know in between the teachers and uh, the student now it it is changed the teacher uh, teachers are supposed to build a dialogue between the parents and other stakeholders in the community parents because most of uh, the time students spend with their parents so you should know that where they are you know investing their time whether the they are wasting their time or they are you know utilizing their time you should know then accordingly you can react then uh, other thing uh, dialogue with the stakeholders you are training uh, uh, after uh, getting the training from uh, the teachers student they are going for the job uh, job market so until unless you have dialogue with the uh, stakeholders how would you know that uh, this kind of uh, you know professionals uh, the stakeholders want so it is always better to have a dialogue with uh, you know stake, stakeholders then uh, then classroom management is also important if you have a good uh, if you have to spend a significant amount of time for uh, getting the learners to listen attentively they if then they are not going to you know point if uh, it is it is the first thing to tackle and real problem for new teachers especially those who are ex experienced teachers uh, they, this is not a, a big issue for uh, for them but for newly joined teachers this classroom management is very uh, you know very important first uh, yeah, i give my own example when i joined this mizoram university when first time i went to the class you know uh, one day before I was the student and the very next day I became, you know, teacher. So, you know, uh, most of the time, uh, you know, I, you know, I, I was smiling all the time uh, instead of class my, in my mind, it was going that now I'm a teacher and how the student are uh, uh, um, after looking at me, how uh, they, they may be feeling. So there were so many things were, you know, going on uh, in my mind. So I means I I I, I accept uh, that I was you know poor in uh, managing the classroom. But after few few classes, the, the, then all 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 went uh, you know uh, right. Then uh, time management again uh, it is ha hard for all uh, professions, especially teaching. It is not just managing your time, but it is budgeting uh, the time you need to get through the uh, curriculum. So sometimes uh, you know teacher teacher when they when they uh, go to the class they keep in mind that. Uh, within one hour, I have to complete this topic. Okay, although they complete uh, that topic within uh, you know one hour, 
in one way it is good but when we see this uh, the another part of this it is you know some uh, it is uh, uh, not not good sometimes what happens all the topics all the concept within one paper are not same some takes time but what we do as a teacher we you know come uh, try to complete within uh, uh, you know within one class so we should not uh, you know do personally i feel uh, i do not know uh, uh, the other teachers they may be having some different uh, opinion then uh, next is sometimes it is frustrating uh, uh, to have new adoptions without support so uh, like suppose uh, the uh, one or two one teacher retires or another or suppose uh, either retires or join some other institution then automatically the you know that paper comes to uh, the other teacher all of a sudden so because teacher is also a, you know requires so let us say for example practical papers nobody is there to teach then automatically it comes uh, to one of the teacher so it is frustrating at least one or two months uh, in advance he should be you know informed that uh, after two months you have to start your classes for this paper so that he he or she can prepare so that is uh, you know an uh, another problem then technology gap it is a very important issue in this uh, corona pandemic you know had it uh, the uh, technology gap all the teachers now you know we have to open our eyes that forget about that uh, you know without uh, uh, learning the ict we can you know survive the corona pandemic has given the best answer to all those teachers who have such type of mentality that without learning ict i can survive now i am in permanent job nobody can touch me so this type of you know mentality we have to you know just uh, remove from uh, our mind we should not carry or we cannot carry uh, this uh, you know uh, this type of mentality any uh, anymore so we have to learn the technology suppose i do not say that uh, as uh, mahapatra sir also discussed that uh, the online teaching cannot uh, replace this offline teaching because that chemistry is missing 100% i agree with mahapatra sir that it cannot be you know replaced but in this uh, type of suppose if uh, after few years again uh, uh, i wish that it should not come uh, for you know hundreds and hundred years but if it comes then uh, we have to be ready for uh, such situation to face such situation so we have to be you know uh, acquainted with the, you know ic ict so then uh, the next next point uh, next point uh, which is you know very close to my heart and i always you know Uh, i always uh, do this for last 7 years i am just uh, practicing this i do not know whether you all with agree or not but uh, uh, this i do means I start with this discussion of the last class i always when i enter in class what i taught in previous class i discuss for you know 5 10 minutes just uh, for the revision of a student then i start the new topic and end the class with discussion and queries discussion and queries and then on board i write whatever points i have discussed in today's class then before leaving the class i ask them that this is uh, in next class this topic i am going to teach so you better you come with some uh, you read something and come to the class to uh, and have some something in mind with related uh, with regard to this concept so uh, that uh, that thing i find it is you know it it helps in uh, you know for me also it helps in teaching and for student also because the student they come with some with something you know some uh, something something they know about the topic then it is very easy you know uh, to uh, discuss and it is easy to make uh, that class an interactive class the next is uh, you know be friendly with your student i do not know how many of you agree with me or not but personally i feel that especially in higher education teacher is not you know expected to be you know very strict i follow it i keep uh, you know uh, uh, the relation with my students you know uh, are friendly you know why there is a reason behind so that whatever they feel they should discuss with me even even if it is something silly so uh, that is why i feel that uh, this friendly uh, nature or friendly environment uh, is required in 
you know uh, teaching teaching profession especially in higher education because all are you know uh, grown up child they are not a small kids so they they cannot be you know make uh, a teacher cannot make them learn with you know a stick or some you know scoldings and all so uh, so that, that is why i feel that it should be then another another problem is that teachers attitude also nowadays earlier the uh, uh, teachers attitude was like you know uh, you write as best as you can i won't give more than 60% in extraordinary case i will i will i may give 670% 75% not beyond that but now it is completely changed now teacher says you write as worse as you can i will start giving 60% uh, i will start with 60% and above so this is uh, this is another problem i don't say that uh, the giving the highest uh, higher marks is uh, you know bad it, a student initially they feel that it, it is good it is you know good for their career but when they you know face the interview the uh, committee they feels that if somebody is getting 80% their expectations you know uh, 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 raise then they ask the questions according to you know their percentage they feel that a student is brilliant but actually it is not then uh, the student they say that uh, sir i could not get job uh, i do not know i answered every each and everything so uh, reason is that i do not know how many of you agree then another another problem is race race for good result among uh, the departments the universities teachers it is you know some uh, some invisible race is uh, you know going on and the for good result all want good result nobody should uh, you know fail even if they do not perform up to that level up to that mark so and it comp it compromised with quality sometimes sometimes a student is getting failed but we you know we feel that if they you know fail that so many questions will be raised and uh, and so so many things are behind it so and the problem is if somebody fails teachers are held responsible for you know if a student fails the exam and authority also they do not even you know try to check the reality whether a student whether a student uh, you know perform in exam anything or not but you know the, that is why teachers also they you know they feel that nobody should you know fail even if somebody has not performed so uh, these are some of the 10 15 points i wanted to discuss with this uh, what's i stop myself i know that uh, no. already it is uh, time is over so uh, uh, thank you uh, at, at, uh, thank you so much to organizing committee especially dr pranobi uh, porel ma'am now it is uh, over to you ma'am thank you amit uh, thank you thank you sir raised very pertinent questions and this is the first time i am listening your lecture it is not a co simply compliment really you are a very good teacher young but a very good teacher Thank, thank you, you for your delivery, for your delivery, sir. And most importantly, Omid is a very good organizer. Also, last uh, February, isn't it? Last February, 2020, he organized a beautiful national seminar at Islamabad University. I was there. So apart from a good teacher, he's a good organizer also. Thank, thank you, you so much, sir. Now we have some questions. Pranavi, uh, anybody can answer. Uh, we have four resource persons: Professor Mohapatra, Dr. Omid. Professor Choudhury and Professor Mithul, anybody can answer. Uh, Pranavi, are you getting me? Yes, this is a, a yes, compliment sir. for Amit, Monica Singh. Thank you, thank you so much, sir. <laughs> Pranavi, yes, sir. what are the questions? Uh, questions. Bolo, question bolo, Monica, ache, bolo. Monica Singh, dear Dr. Ah. Amit, you have touched almost every problem which can become or result into the gap between teachers and students it is a comment it is not a question yes sir it is yes, sir. a comment it is not a question 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 please he appreciate she appreciated amit as like me okay <laughs> <laughs> where you where will you send uh, feedback a uh, link che cheta onno question question bolo ha Is 
is it possible to motivate the students regarding online class who are not afford uh, afford have afford laptop or smartphone as because poor students are already suffer in pandemic period yes digital divide professor mohapatra uh it's a very very good question uh, raised by the student uh, you know that uh, we have experienced the same i told you uh, during uh, starting of this pandemic uh, mane uh, whenever we started our online classes uh, we could able to reach only to the 50% of the 50 to 60% of the student and it was really an uh, embarrassing situation for us because uh, due to this uh, say uh, inability inability say inability we cannot say inability of the parent or the economic situation the economic condition of the parents economic uh, uh, situation of the family should be also studied uh, whenever we are uh, supporting online classes uh, suppose a family has a three to four children uh, then how yeah. they can accommodate in the time of the time of the online classes are also sometimes same so how they can uh, how the parents will be afford to say the three to four smartphone or laptop that is a very really um, an embarrassing situation that is a uh, Uh, what to do with this thing so i i i i suggest that uh, this uh, uh, online classes for a, uh, it cannot be a supplement also it for a time bound period the online classes will be a time bound period it cannot replace the uh, classroom mode of teaching uh, thank you very much another question it is the shomaho chatterji in this pandemic situation where everything is unstable to what extent will this new learning method to be used and are we are going slowly going away with the traditional method of teaching professor mithul yeah i can listen to you sir you are in the yes. car isn't it you are in the car uh, i am in the car waiting for my wife because i ha- i have to pick up her uh, during this pandemic i am a full time okay. driver so our two resource <laughs> person driving the car fantastic सिचुएशन <laughs> Uh-huh. Where everything is unstable, to what extent will this new learning methods used? To uh-huh. what extent the new learning methods be used, and we are and slowly doing away with the traditional methods of teaching? Definitely, definitely. Uh-huh. Of course, uh, in my presentation, I have also said the same thing, and Professor Mohapatra also uh, placed it yeah. very strongly that yes, uh, of course, face-to-face method will. Uh, re again we again come again to us face to face method will come soon and uh, the situation as long as the situation will be prevailed we of course go back to our classroom so no doubt of it but right now it is the time of the it is the demand of the time that yes you have to be habituated with your ict you have to use your technology you have to face these challenges otherwise the session jam will be occur and you will be long far behind from your current study so please as a professional i am requesting you to keep up with this situation and 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 what kind of situation is coming on we have to that capacity to cope up with that situation as well so this is the answer exactly. of my side e- exactly exactly we have to adapt to this new type of pedagogy and exactly. when the time, better time will come we can uh, go back to our original place go back to our class exactly uh, uh, sharbashish banerji in what way will the student benefit if the practical classes are solved amit please your question in what way will the students benefit if the practical classes are solved yeah ha huh. actually actually sir uh, this uh, for pra- practical classes i am also taking online but personally uh, if honestly i have to answer i am not uh, satisfied not at all yeah so uh, wh- what i do Because i just uh, in ms word file i just type a steps then i ask a student to come online so means somehow i am managing and yeah. not only in, i am not only in my case i think almost each and every faculty they are having the same problem in case of practical obviously obviously happiness will ne- will never come in this situation never come i yes. think as a teacher we will not be happy but it's a time it's a 
situation that we are facing no, no. in practical class yes, yes. in practical class especially physics chemistry math and uh, practical practical class means face to face we have to face that classes it is impossible through online so this is yes sir yes sir i think everyone is facing yes sir when i when i compare uh, this online practical class and this offline yeah. then uh, that is why i said otherwise yeah, yeah, I if I, I, I if i have to choose uh, uh, in, uh, one in uh, among uh, between these two and I, i would i would go for this uh, offline class so yeah. but in this corona pandemic we, uh, we do not have any other option so we have to go with that right Right. In our in our I will, I will put my I will put a word to it. I will put a word to it. In the yes, yes, when the, we were uh, we were in the uh, practical classes, we go to each and every student table and we see that how he has performed, uh, what things he has yeah, done, yeah, whether he is exactly. uh, rightly done yeah. or wrongly done. So yes, we sir. guide yes, them sir. usually. So these type yes, of sir. things cannot be happen in the online mode. Okay. Thank you. Another right. question from Suham Sankar. do you think uh, this online teaching and education are not effective to students in villages in bangladesh and other countries dr mithul mithul sir yeah 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 yeah, yeah. do yeah do you yeah. think that online teaching and education are not effective to students in place of course it is effective why not in my presentation i have shown you that yes especially some disaster prone areas there is very vulnerable for sidor island some other disasters i mean river erosion flash flood so those areas specially they will be benefited if they use online classes i am tell i am I, i told you that yes because as we are preparing some videos it is equally used for all of the students those who are not uh, who are staying in remote rural areas they will not be discriminated even in urban areas only the online classes it has no any clear discrimination keep it in mind because professor udoy chatterjee when he will give a lecture even in staying in a remote rural area so the bangladeshi people i can also listen it in the same way the people who are staying in calcutta they are listening so so okay. there is no any question about discrimination it is the right way that will discrimination will not prevail further so we need to go ahead with online classes it is the best way right now okay okay thank you so in any place, place, place on people on? no one will be discriminated yes tanmay banan tanmay tamal bondopadhyay how to motivate students regarding online class in this pandemic situation amit it is it is your question actually, actually uh, this uh, for motivation but uh, what i what i do i don't know i do not know whether i am correct or not but what i do i, I am just sharing so sometimes a student because it is in in class i always believe in two way interaction two way communication but in on, online online mode first class when i you know started i kept each and every student on mute mode and started my class after the class i felt uh, you know that uh, means i did not enjoy so i asked then in next class i asked the students you do a uh, student also they felt bored because in my class they are used to of you know uh, having interaction a kind of discussion we always have in class so uh, okay. in next class uh, what i did i asked student to keep Uh, yourself on uh, unmute mode if they are sitting with their family members or some kid is there or some uh, you know noise is going on then you can mute yourself otherwise you keep yourself on unmute mode so like this then student they felt uh, you know uh, motivated and uh, when in interaction was there so they felt motivated and student uh, feedback also i got that student said sir this uh, this type of class is uh, you know we wanted so that uh, means they 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 were motivated i feel okay thank you amit any That's question any more ha phalguni bhattacharya sir when some of our students are with their regular hardship arranging the food how we can suggest them to teach and learn with the new technological system mohapatra sir no, that is uh, same thing same question sir again uh, yes, today yes, yes. what to do because uh, uh, we we know the economic condition of our country and uh, economic condition of our uh, many parents and family and uh, it's uh, hard to um, many compel them to buy technologies to adopt to the technologies uh, but to what to do but simultaneously they have to uh, support uh, the teaching and learning and whenever they have become admitted as a student they have to pursue their course they have to complete their course and they have to be awarded they have to he is to complete and get the degree so what to do they have to cooperate with us 
if they don't have the technology they must uh, uh, take the help of some other colleague uh, other student other fellow colleague uh, so that uh, uh, their uh, their uh, degree their acquiring uh, the degree can be fulfilled or their vision or objective can be fulfilled otherwise it is not Mahatma possible sir, even, but even, even we the... cannot compel them we cannot yeah, compel Mahatma them sir, really Yes. Please. Even uh, even even uh, the even the school or even the college or the institution can also provide some subsidy. But you see, to you see, school. Uh, yeah. What happened? I am I am telling one example. I am telling one example in Kit School that called the College mm -hmm. Institute of Technology. Uh, for the school children, they have arranged the their uh, they have their the the owner of the school is having their own channel that is called College TV. He used to exactly. teach them in the uh, TV exactly. channel. So hmm. that may be a, a, a mass media can be a, a mode of teaching. Mass yeah. media or uh, radio, television can be a, a replacement for this. But uh, it is yeah. also sometimes problem. Uh, students stay in the remote village. They don't have the connectivity. Sometimes power loss, power cut, or power failure, yeah. continuous power failure. So that is a uh, very hard to say about this. Thank you. Right. Uh, one right. thing. One thing I should mention in our university, that is the Jadavpur University, university. and alumni of our uh, university are funding for the poor students to provide smartphone and data so this is a good gesture from the part of our university to help yeah. the poor students next question anita sharma how to increase the elements of interaction on online mode of teaching interaction anybody yeah. anybody, anybody i think answer? sir i think sir answer yeah. of this question uh, yes, is already, already done, done. फॉर्मल वोट ऑफ थैंक्स Ha, thank you Udan sir. Now we have reached ah, at the you. last part of this program vote of thanks. We wish to express our gratitude to Professor Dr. Udan Bhattacharya, Professor Department of Library and Information Science, Jadavpur University for active cooperation. Without his guidance the this international webinar could not be possible to organize for us. We like to grateful to our honorable speakers rk mahapatra associate professor and head of the department of library and information science tripura university tripura professor mahapal nasiruddin professor and head of the department of library and information science and team school of undergraduate study national university bangladesh professor dr Dr. Ranjit Kumar Chowdhury, head of the Department of Library and Information Science and University Librarian in charge at Mahatma Gandhi Central University, Bihar, Bihar. Dr. Amit Kumar, Assistant Professor in Department of Library and Information Science, Mizoram University, for delivering very rich and illuminating presentation. I would like to express our deep gratitude. to our principal chair dr roshant bhattacharya for motivating me for organizing this webinar i am very thankful to our icuc coordinator professor tanmay bandopadhyay and other member of icuc i am thankful to mr vikash kumar haldar another librarian of our colleague and our library team member i am also thankful to dr robiul alam convener of it committee of our college last of all i am also thankful to our colleagues friends and my dear students and other participants of the webinar and supporters thank you thank you very much thank you very much pranavi thank you bhandadarji sir thank you amit thank you thank you sir if we will, will meet soon now, now same thing no, there is uh, no power there, there is no power just okay, the okay. sound <laughs> sound ha huh.